Back to School, a new way of learning. Parents need to have a choice. From the classrooms to the computer, students and teachers going virtual in a pandemic world. Tonight, we hear from the superintendent for Charleston County Schools on her plans to keep children safe while learning. Plus, some teachers facing grueling decisions quit their jobs or go back to school and risk contracting this deadly disease. None of us are too comfortable right now. We're, we're still a little weary, and there are a lot of questions we have. And the state education superintendent speaking out about the biggest issues teachers and parents are facing. I am taking this seriously, and I am putting the need, safety, welfare of our children at the top of the list when I make my decisions. Many figuring out how to adjust our daily routines to help stop the spread of this virus. News 2 at 530 starts now with our Back to School special. And thank you for joining us for Back to School, a new way of learning. Parents, students, and teachers all preparing for this new school year. A very different one with yeah. new challenges because of COVID-19. News 2's Sophia Desisor spoke with the state's top educator about how they are tackling these obstacles. That's right, Carolyn. In our one-on-one -on -one conversation, State Superintendent Molly Spearman said she wants parents and teachers to know they are working around the clock to ensure schools are a, quote, safe place. We have ordered an enormous amount of the PPE, the equipment, the face masks, the hand sanitizers, the plexiglass, all of those things. The state is being very generous with the CARES Act funding to cover uh, the cost of all of that. So we believe that when school does open, we will be prepared with all of the sanitary equipment. What is protocol if a student has COVID symptoms? Well, there are very uh, detailed specifics from DHEC and the CDC on how each situation should be handled. But generally, if a child has symptoms of difficulty of breathing, uh, no taste or smell, those type symptoms, they should not come to school. Uh, if a child becomes sick at school, and we isolate them. They would be isolated in a room away from all other students and sent home. Typically, it's a 14-day quarantine for that student, and a decision would be made about how many folks they came in contact with for more than 15 minutes within six feet. And I imagine that becomes more complicated when it's a teacher because there is a class depending on that instruction. Um, our schools and districts prepared and ready for a teacher being out for two weeks at a time? Well, that's going to be a real challenge. And uh, teachers are so essential to the operation of the school. So it's very difficult. Uh, that is one of the real questions right now that we're getting from superintendents because those teachers, if they are ill, they do need to go home. If they have a family members who are ill, they would have to be isolated as well. So again, those protocols are stated and we're working very closely with DHEC to be sure that they are uh, implemented as they should be. What's your number one concern in all of this? I think it probably is the emotional stability of our children. We can catch them up in content, but uh, folks are just very stressed, and we don't know how stressed each family is, some more than others, because parents may have lost their job or, or a deceased family member or someone who's really sick. So that really concerns me that we're not available to those students every day. And so that's one reason why I'm really pushing our school districts to offer some type of face-to-face -face intervention and period of time that they can talk with our students. Spearman says they are working to offer COVID tests in schools for children. Coming up at our back to school coverage, I continue my conversation with Superintendent Spearman to talk about virtual education and what's being done to ensure students can get connected and stay engaged. Sophia, thank you. From Columbia to Charleston, we are hearing from education leaders. Coming up in the next few minutes, I will be speaking live with the Charleston County Superintendent, Dr. Jarita Postalweight, on the Charleston County School District's plan for the upcoming school year. Face masks will be required at all public schools in this state for anyone older than two. This goes into effect as soon as the school year begins. The State Department of Education is also providing five masks for the year for each teacher, bus driver, custodian, and food service worker at school. 
School administrators throughout the Tri-County area are scrambling to make sure every school has a full-time nurse when classes begin. This after South Carolina Education Superintendent Molly Spearman said she cannot guarantee that every school in the state will have a full-time nurse. Dorchester Districts 2 and 4, as well as Berkeley County School District, say they will have at least one full-time nurse when school begins. You have at least one um, full-time nurse assigned to each school. Uh, the only place that you may see that be a little bit different is at our um, alternative school and our Berkeley Middle College. So Berkeley Middle College is actually on the campus of Trident Technical College. So our alternative school and Berkeley Middle College share a nurse allocation. Um, but with that being said, our alternative school is on the campus of our district office. So our director of nursing is accessible for our, our alternative school. And Charleston County says they did have to add some positions to make sure each school had a nurse in their district. Carlton County parents must decide on the virtual or blended model for their children. You have until Tuesday to fill it out. If you don't, your child will automatically be enrolled in the blended option. And today is the last day for parents in Dorchester District 2 to register their children for school. Registration is required for both new and returning students. News 2's Taylor Murray reports registration is mandatory. All students, new and returning, must be registered to participate in Dorchester District 2 instruction for the 2020-2021 school year. The State Department of Education approved the district's plan to start school on September 8th with virtual learning only. If COVID-19 cases decline, the district will start incorporating in-person instruction by September 14th. Every DD2 student will be issued a tablet or laptop before the first day of school. The curriculum technologies facilitator says the mandatory registration will help distribute the devices. And all families need to complete an online registration form for students in virtual academy or that school-based instruction if and in order to receive a student device. We have a link to the registration forms you need to fill out on our website, CountOn2.com. Reporting in studio, Taylor Murray, Count On 2. And you can count on two for everything you need to know on getting your child back to school. We have school start dates, schedules, and the latest information when it comes to athletics. It's all posted on our website. There's the address, CountOn2.com. Next on News 2. Across the Lowcountry, school districts are finalizing their reopening plans. Tonight, we hear from the Charleston County School District Superintendent, Dr. Jarita Postalwaite, in a live interview on the other side of this break. Back to school, a new way of learning. School districts across the state are having to make drastic changes to the way they teach your children. And the school year, of course, starts in just a few weeks. Joining us from downtown Charleston right now is Charleston County School District Superintendent Dr. Jarita Postawaite. Dr. Postawaite, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon to answer some of these questions as parents make some tough decisions about how they will proceed in the next school year. Dr. Postaway, let's talk first Thank about you. the uh, certainly. Let's talk first about the two options that are available to parents. Of course, there is the virtual academy as well as in-person learning. Let's talk about the virtual academy. Sort that out for us. What does that mean for families? The immediate decision that families need to make in Charleston County is um, whether they want their children to go long term. Uh, in a virtual mode. So parents who know now that they are uncomfortable with their children coming back into the classroom should enroll by a week from tomorrow in Charleston County's virtual academy. That means that they will be guaranteed to deliver uh, instruction in a virtual remote mode uh, with devices provided by the district and supports for Wi-Fi if they need it uh, for the entire year if necessary. Now, what is the threshold for face-to-face -face instruction? What is considered safe and what are some of the guidelines that you have in place to make sure that students as well as administrators are safe for those who decide on face-to-face -face instruction? So um, the face-to-face -face instruction is something that we're going to phase in very slowly based on uh, decline, the decline in COVID-19 rates in our area. We know we've had a, 
uh, about a three-week steady decline now. Assuming that that decline continue, continues, then on September 8th, uh, we'll begin to phase in as many as uh, one-fourth of our students in smaller sizes in classrooms with teachers who indicate that they're comfortable with that. The safety measures range from the moment the students step on the bus wearing masks to all the distancing that has to occur in the halls as children come into and leave the building, the plexiglass dividers, uh, as well as wearing masks to try to provide that extra layer of precaution. Every aspect of school operations is being rethought um, in conjunction with MUSC as we go through the protocols that are recommended to take, to take every possible measure to protect children as well as the adults who are serving them. Which transmission rates will you be watching closely? Are you talking about local transmission rates in Charleston County or statewide transmission rates? We're, we're watching our local rates uh, here in Charleston County with the help of both the DHEC data and the metrics that MUSC publishes on their website. And Dr. Postal Wade, if students are in fact engaged in face-to-face -face instruction when that does happen, are you going to use vacant or underutilized buildings to make sure that they are still able to practice safe social distancing? Um, to date, we've been able to, uh, to date we've been able to arrange uh, the uh, spaces inside our own buildings by looking differently at the utilization. So we've not yet needed to reach out to other entities to house students. Um, if the COVID rate improves drastically and we're able to bring vastly more students back, that's something we would be interested in. But at this point, uh, we are able to serve those students um, eventually whose parents have indicated they want them to come back in person. But again, that's going to be phased in over many weeks or months. All right. And Dr. Pulso, well, we have a couple of other questions. Hopefully we'll be able to get these answered. Is there any possibility of on-site testing for students? Yes, we're really hopeful that that will be approved. Uh, that's something that superintendent Superintendent Spearman is working on at the state level with DHEC um, to hope uh, that the school health nurse will be given the opportunity to, to administer the type of testing that's not very invasive at all. It's just the, the, the gentle nose swab. Uh, those tests would be sent off to the DHEC labs and right now there's a 24-hour turnaround rate on the state DHEC labs uh, for those tests. So we're very hopeful that we'll be able to offer that because the availability of testing is critical to our uh, capacity to start back safely. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Jarita Postlewaite, Superintendent of Charleston County School District, answering some of our questions tonight. We appreciate your time, thank you. Thank we you. want you to stay right here with us. We are coming right back with more news after a break. Back to school, a new way of learning. Every school district in the state is required to have a virtual option for students and some like Charleston County School District will start strictly virtual, which is a problem for children without access to the web. News to Sophia DeSasor took questions about accessibility to the Capitol. Brendan, State Superintendent Molly Spearman tells me at the end of last year, they were in emergency mode, scrambling to create a virtual program. Because of that, they were lax about attendance. In fact, it wasn't even taken, creating concerns about children falling behind. She says this go around, students enrolled in a virtual option will have to participate, putting more pressure on school districts to make sure students can access the Internet. We've made tremendous progress in the availability and accessibility of uh, Wi-Fi to students across the state. We are currently delivering uh, hotspots. Uh, we know that we have about 150,000 available and we're getting those out to the schools and to the families who need those. So it's a very exciting time. And for people who have high-speed internet, you, it's easy to take it for granted how <laughs> many people really don't have that broadband connection. Even with the federal funding that has been allocated, there will be some students who just don't have that access, correct? That's true. Now, there's some families who might have access and just can't afford to pay for it. So 
Some of the CARES Act funding can be used for that, and we plan to assist families. The problem is that that only goes through the end of this year, December 31st. So I will be asking the legislature to look at that, and hopefully they will be able to fund some service provided uh, throughout the whole school year. And I heard there was a new grant that was just allocated. Will that have to do with Connection 2? Uh, it does assist. Uh, there are several things that the $15 million grant will cover. One of those is a new system with ETV called data casting, and it's for those families out in those very remote areas where it's very difficult to get Wi-Fi to them, and th the uh, transmission would go over the ETV towers to their TV set and to their devices so that students could get the material. So this grant helps support a pilot project of that, and then also working training for parents, for students, teachers, and accessibility. You mentioned hotspots. We know Chromebooks are being distributed to a lot of students. Recently, we've heard some districts say they're having trouble keeping track of the equipment that's being passed out. Is that something that's on your radar, keeping track of this expensive well, equipment? It's, it's our responsibility to inventory any uh, material that's purchased with federal or state tax dollars. So it's, it's difficult in this time because we are being very generous as we give material and, and infrastructure to students and to their families. I think some of that will be corrected when students come back to school in the next few weeks uh, to register, but we are watching that and reminding districts that they have to keep a tab on where the material, where the infrastructure goes. The data casting pilot program she mentioned will require setting up antennas and equipment. Spearman says it's not ideal because it does not allow for two-way communication, but it can put teaching materials in the hands of students struggling to get online. Next on News 2. Don't forget this weekend is tax-free weekend here in South Carolina. Tonight, what experts say are the most popular items on this year's school supply list. That's coming up. Back to school, a new way of learning. Well, parents, as you are preparing for the school year, whether it be virtual or in the classroom, take advantage of tax-free weekend. I know I will. Yeah. It's starting this Friday. Yeah, tomorrow, News 2's Danielle Hensley spoke to a local school supply store who says sales have started to increase after a late start because of concerns of coronavirus. 63% of K-12 through families plan on buying laptops this year, which is up from 54% in 2019 according to a survey done by the National Retail Federation, which Rod sides with Deloitte Consulting, says is due to e-learning. The traditional school supplies were in decline by about 12 percent, and that was really made up for by the amount of hardware that people were purchasing, computers, etc. At Education Station, a school supply store in Somerville, General Manager Tim Davies says teachers are still buying traditional classroom supplies, but more parents are coming in for education materials. And we're seeing an uptick in the number of families that are electing to homeschool this year. So that has, uh, we, we're, we're here to help them as well, of course, and we have a lot of materials available to help the homeschooling community. As a parent who homeschools, Amy Thomas says while she is used to having her children home during the year, she is even having to plan more and buy extra supplies due to closures caused by COVID-19. A lot of times we go out and take our classes outside of the classroom or um, take even a PE class outside of the classroom, so we're stocking up on fun things to do at home instead. Tax-free weekend begins this Friday and will last until Sunday, which means you will not be required to pay the state's 6% tax rate on certain items. Reporting in Somerville, Danielle Hensley, Count On 2.